Some days you win, some days you lose. Today, I won. Trader, somehow I'm going to finish my day in green, but I do want to talk about something which I think is very important because I was uh, privately asked something and uh, I'll answer it, it here in the room. And um, it has to do with uh, determining the target price of a trade. I mean, where do I determine, how do I determine what will be the target price of the trade that I'm taking? And uh, as you can see here, I'm going to finish in green today. Lucky to be in green because of great trade in BIB. Had my share of winners, had my share of losers today. Uh, two trades in VLTX, but uh, a very nice one in BIB. Uh, moving me back to green territory. And of course, Chris just helped a little bit. I'm still riding some uh, BIB, so it's going to be a bit better than that. And um, Chris as well, hopefully it's going to continue. Um, I do want to talk about uh, how to set up a target price. And um, for that, let's take a look at uh, BIAB. Well, BIAB was posted here in the room, uh, not by me. It was uh, posted by uh, some of you guys in the room and uh, for a potential short. And I just followed this pick and I thought it was right. And the reason why I follow this pick is mainly because of the daily. You take a look at the daily, you see what happened there. You just remember a few days ago, that's how I really started my week with a huge winner. And um, that's uh, what happened in BIAB after it was halted and then opened up. And then I just had this amazing 400 and something thousand dollar winner here in BIAB. But now comes the time where BIAB is likely to come down. So we also enjoyed another trade during this week, which was a short quiz right over here, over 400. We went long and today is the day where BIB comes down. Now I'm a bit, um, I'm a bit angry at myself because I should have watched BIB. I should have followed it. When the stock is that much extended, it should have a big drop day and it had it today. Well, it's not really a huge day down. It really just started with a green in green and came down, closed the gap and continue. So it's a very clear reciprocal range play, which I missed. I didn't watch it. I should have watched it. It's a big mover recently. I sh it should have been on my chart, on my screen. I did not watch it. There were several opportunities to trade BIB today. Normally, that would be the first one over here. Look at this one. Now, normally you wouldn't take a short in stock that is that strong. But then if you take a look at the daily of BAB and see how extended it is, so you can definitely think about shorting the uh, about shorting BAB. <coughs> now, if you go lower than this, then you have another short opportunity, which is right over here. It came down strong, pulled back up and came down again. And then you have another short opportunity, the one we took right here in the trading room, which was right over here under 41050. Uh, so that was more like here. So that's the one we took today, but there were several short opportunities. And definitely, if you enjoyed the first one or the second one, you should be riding it. And I'm still riding a uh, small size here, hoping it's going to continue coming down. But Let's take a look at how you determine, that's the topic of my lesson today, how do you determine your target price when you're planning to uh, take a trade like BAB? The only way to do it is to watch the volatility. So if you took the first one, look at the volatility of the stock prior to where you moved into a short. So if you take a look at uh, the numbers, you'll see that you are around 420 and if you go up to this level of it over here you, you see that you are at 427 so you can see that it's moving like seven points up and down and uh, so if, if you're planning your target you should be within this limit so if you're planning a trade and you're planning to short it and you're looking at the prior volatility of BIAB today is the most important you can take a look at yesterday of course but today is more important then you can see that it has a move, if you look here, at around five to six points. This move here is around seven points. But if you take a look more, I mean, this move up, for example, is five points. That move 
up from here to here is five points. The overall range was around seven points. So if you take a look at these prior two moves, which are five points, and you plan your next trade, you should be looking at around five points as well. So 420, now take a look at what happened here. It came down approximately four points, maybe four and a half points. So again, within the uh, non-volatility of the stock, the one that it did earlier. And then it pulled back up, came down again, crashed down again, and so interesting, that's another five points here. Five and a half points. Well, of course, it's not by the cent. You know, it could be several points difference, but it's, it's the same. You can see crash down. And if you ask yourself, what is the uh, behavior of the stock? What is the pattern that the stock is following? And then you can see that today it's around five, six, seven points. That's the personality of BIIB today. In fact, it's the personality of BIIB for a long, long time. But a day like today where it's quite volatile and you can see that every prior move here was around five points, you would expect it to come down five points. So if you expect it to come down five points, where should you be? Should be your partial? Anywhere between three to four points. You're not going the whole way of five points because you don't want to be, you know, that it will reach your target. And then, I mean, sometimes it just gets close and, and bounces back up and so on. Now, the 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 the, the uh, at, at the beginning of the trading day you can expect the whole five points. The next one you should probably expect four points. The next one, the one we took, you don't expect the whole five points because it's you know the volatility becomes uh, uh, lower and lower. And now at that point it's very extended to the downside. So I was really looking at the previous um, moves at, at its personality today. And I saw that it's around five, six, sometimes seven points. And it's a little bit too extended. I'm taking this trade. I like the momentum. I like the daily. I think it's going to continue coming down. And yes, it did. It came down from 4, 10, 50 to 4, 6 or so. So that was uh, what, like four and a half points, uh, 4 or 6. That was four and a half points. Did not make the five points. But again, within the, lim the limits, I did not get the, the full... Uh, four points or even three, but my target was around three points and it worked out um, really okay. So again, if you want to decide, and, 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 and then again, look at what happened later. It bounced up five points, came down five points, bounced up again five points, came down again five points. Again, that's the personality of BIB today. So if you want to determine your target price, you need to take a look at... Uh, um, you need to take a look at uh, the point where uh, at, at its previous behavior and understand what to expect. But that's it. Uh, any questions if you have uh, regarding this, then uh, I'll be happy to answer. But again, if you plan a trade, always take a look at the previous volatility, the way it behaved. Mayor, I've got a question for you. And, you know, one of the things that uh, we were battling this morning, both you and I, on the VRTX trade, right? Um, it's worked out now, but how do you, I'm trying, I, I know what I went through this morning, I know what you did as well, but maybe for some of the traders here in the room, how is it, how do you get yourself mentally prepared for a stock that goes against you? You, you know it's right, you talked about it yourself this morning, you mm -hmm. said VRTX is down this morning considerably, right, from the, from the close yesterday. So, your first entry you know, it's down 10, 12 percent. Your first entry is wrong as a trader. You take the loss. So many traders in the room and many new traders are staying away from that stock uh, for the rest of the day or the rest of the morning because they've been burned once. How do you mentally say to yourself, okay, listen, I know I'm right. I need to get back in. How do you prepare yourself, I guess, mentally to come back into the trade after having a loss like that? Well, let's just say, uh, let's go quickly through VRTX. You know, the stock was down like 9% or so. So you would expect the first pullback to be a gap and go. You expect it to come down, which didn't happen. That's where we took our first loss. It moved over the highs. We got to have a stop loss somewhere, of course. So we moved out. But when a stock is down 8, 9, 10%, <clears throat> you expect it to fail. If it didn't happen the first time, then probably the second time. 
Now it's extremely rare that it's doing it on the third time, which is now. I would not take a third trade. I had two losing trades in VRTX. Here's the results here, you know, I'm down almost 10 grand in tier VRTX today. Two trades, so <laughs> I had enough. The thing is, when, when, when I'm taking my first trade and I'm failing, it's very likely for a stock that is down that much to work out at the second pullback, which was right over here and sadly did not work as well. Well, tell you what, it's rare, but it happens. Um, theoretically, we could have taken a small partial here, but we were expecting it to move uh, farther. So we were expecting a bigger target, but, and then it came for the third time. That's very rare. And, and I'm not sure it really is working well right now. It did not come down under the lows. It's really just going sideways and slightly down. So that comes into the category of the stocks that do not really do what you expect them to do. That's not the majority. That's a small part of it. That's maybe 30%, maybe more. 30 is a lot, but you know, some of them just don't do what you expect them to do, right? I mean, it's a part of the game. There's no way around it. But if the first one failed, tell you what, the second one is very likely to succeed. So I'm, st I'm, 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 the first one should have at least, in my opinion, 65% uh, chance to succeed. Second one, maybe more, because it failed the first time. Now I'm taking it the second time, as long as I'm following my rules, of course, and I'm getting the right in at the right time and everything. Then I, I don't expect less. In fact, I probably expect more. And anyway, a uh, second time didn't work out. Well, but it happens. So I'm just prepared because I have to do what is right to do technically. We always do what is right to do technically. So when we expect something technical to happen, the only way to become a trader is to just repeat what you know. And I just repeated what I know. That's the trick. That's what you're supposed to do. Third time, well, I won't do that because taking the same trade for the third time, obviously something's going wrong there. And it's, there's also the risk that I'm trying to, you know, get back uh, uh, to a green trade. I'm just taking my revenge trade. It's possibly my revenge trade. I don't want to be there. I don't want to take my revenge trade. Am I taking it now because it's a revenge trade or am I taking it because I really believe it's going to finally come down? I'll see you all uh, next week, traders. Have fun. Have a great weekend, everyone. And if you're on YouTube, thumb up. Uh, will be appreciated. Thank you. Have a great weekend all. Bye.